uh, go into some more detail. Um, so uh, my name is Ken Silverman, for the record. I'm the Director of Government Affairs uh, for HOC. I'm joined with by Zachary Marks, who's our Chief Real Estate Officer. Um, just uh, a quick geography to orient you. Um, we're coming to you from beautiful Montgomery County, Maryland which is uh, just north of Washington, D.C. Uh, our neighbors on the west is uh, Virginia. And then uh, this is the rest of Maryland to the east. Um, on the right, you can see a map from uh, 1980 uh, master plan, which dedicated about a third of our land area to um, agricultural use exclusively. Um, so we are uh, a very diverse county, um, both in terms of population as well as in terms of uh, land use. Uh, so we have a, a, a th about a third of the county that's uh, really very rural in character, uh, a, a large mass of the county that uh, has a suburban development pattern, and then uh, around the metro rail uh, stops that connect us to Washington, D.C., uh, we have uh, some very urban uh, nodes where you would really feel like you're um, in the middle of a city. Um, we have about 1.1 million residents. Um, we have uh, four of the top 10 most diverse cities in the United States. Um, and we are proud to be home to a number of federal agencies that form the backbone of our economy. Um, this is uh, just a little bit about HOC. Um, so the Housing Opportunities Commission is Montgomery County's public housing authority. Um, but we are more than that. Um, unlike uh, a lot of other public housing authorities across the country, we are also the ho a housing finance agency for the county, which means that we can issue bonds and write loans. Uh, we use that authority to support low cost mortgages for um, low and moderate income uh, home buyers, as well as uh, finance multifamily development, uh, both our own and, uh, and third parties. Um, and uh, we are also a public developer, so we um, own and operate uh, about 9,000 um, housing units, and uh, we have a, an ambitious pipeline um, of uh, almost 3,300 new units coming online uh, in the next five years or so. Um, I think uh, one of the things that... Um, probably caught Representative Lugner's eye. We, we, we've got a bit of national press lately for the housing production fund uh, that we developed. Um, and uh, Zach is going to tell you about that um, as we go through. So, Thank you for the record, Zachary Marks, Chief Real Estate Officer for the Housing Opportunities Commission of Montgomery County. Um, so uh, focusing on the housing production fund, the general idea here, um, uh, the in in Maryland DC and uh, Northern Virginia there was there's something called the Metro Washington Council of Governments uh, where all the different jurisdictions got together and among other things came up with a combined housing goal and what we have found over the first few years of trying to accomplish that housing goal is that you know the for-profit production that's out there which is mostly your market rate housing your nonprofit production which is you know mostly your tax credit deals um, and some of the work that HOC is doing, which really falls into both of both of those um, themes, uh, was really only producing about 60% of that goal. And so um, HOC wanted to step up with an idea of how to really get the other chunk that wasn't showing up. So to do that, we had to come up with a tool that would not compete or cannibalize those other channels because we need those those housing partners to continue to produce. So. The idea of the Housing Production Fund was really to take uh, a model that HSC has, has uh, executed on for, for many decades, which is this mixed income model, but publicly owned uh, by HSC as a governmental agency. Uh, and the council asked us, how can you do more of that? And how can you do more of it in a way that doesn't, um, you know, doesn't take away from, you know, isn't basically netted out, netted out against, you know, a, 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 a community that a nonprofit would have built or a for-profit developer would have built. And so the production fund was born out of that idea, um, but it also, um, and so the, the first idea is that it wouldn't, wouldn't really compete with these other sources. The second, though, is that we're falling well short of those goals. And so 
the program needed to be very simple. It needed to be very fast, and it needed to be scalable. Um, that if this was going to be a reasonable part of the solution to, to the missing chunk that was supposed to be showing up every year in terms of supply, then this fund needed to accomplish that. And so, um, you know, the, the fund uh, that was ultimately created was created in two pieces. It's, it's now a $100 million revolving fund, and we can certainly get into the mechanics of that should you wish. Uh, but it's really designed to be uh, construction equity. Um, uh, readily available and low cost at about 5%. Um, and uh, that, that that funding is available to HSC to basically be married with both our existing pipeline, but also to give our commission by whom we're governed uh, to uh, be comfortable with, in fact, doing more than we're doing already. So even more than that 3,300 units that Ken, Ken uh, told you about the commission can be more confident about actually pursuing more if we know we have this dedicated available funding. Uh, and so the general idea here is that um, these loans would be made to these projects that HSC is 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 constructing. Uh, and those loans are about five years, which is generally speaking enough time to build and lease up the building, at which point it's what's called stabilized, where you have enough people in it to pay all your bills, pay your mortgage, uh, and then you can apply what's called permanent financing to it. Um, and HOC, because we are also a housing finance agency, happens to also be in position to do that too. But even if the, the housing authority and the, and the finance agency were separate, those two agencies could simply work together in this way. But the general idea is to get as many units built as fast as possible, but with the idea that HOC will be the, the owning and controlling interest in that property. And that brings with it some immediate benefits. So it's first and foremost a production solution. So it's really getting at, you know, many of the, uh, and you've heard a lot of that today in terms of there's this immediate need and that's where su that's what subsidy is all about. But there's also how do we, how do we change the, this thing structurally on the long term? And that's the supply side. This is first and foremost a supply side solution, but we also wanted to pick up some mission along the way. So, um, each of these transactions um, will have 20% of units at 50% AMI, 10% at uh, Montgomery County's inclusionary zoning limit. Uh, it, uh, if you think about it as just sort of the tax credit maximum, you're not gonna be far off, but 30% total affordable. Um, and these, these uh, because these units are owned by HOC, HOC automatically follows as a policy, the voluntary rent guideline, which is a voluntary, um, um, rent stabilization measure that the county's had in place for for a long time so even market rate tenants um uh, that uh, in units that hsc owns benefit from that uh, that rent stabilization measure um, slide to the next slide so again emphasizing that speed theme this is how fast we were able to stand this up and put it to use so the council passed the first resolution in March 21, so that's that first 50 million. The 100 million was created in those two pieces. Uh, the fund was established by August, and that's with um, that's with really a July 1 a fiscal year go live date. And the first loan was made in, in December, and so you can see that we're already almost uh, a year from the first funds being actually recycled out of the out of uh, the first project loan. And again, that was because this tool didn't invent the business model. The business model had been there for a long time, this public ownership, this mixed income. So we were able to really take this tool and marry it to uh, something that HOC did well, but, but wasn't doing as much of as it otherwise could have with this funding present. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So some examples and um, of the housing that we've produced here. Um, because I know for some folks, sometimes the 30% the affordability number can be, um, can, can raise questions. Um, but this is the mixed income model that HSC has pursued in addition to everything else we do. We do tax credit deals. We do majority and, uh, you know, majority affordable deals too. But this is, again, supposed to be a separate uh, supply side issue, uh, part of the business model that, um, that adds to all those other things that all of us are already working real hard to deliver. So the first, one of the things you can see though, is that these are also much, much, much larger deals than uh, tax credit deals typically are. So in Montgomery County, the average 4% uh, low income housing tax credit deal is usually about 132 units. 
Um, and so in this case, you're getting 30% of much larger properties. And so you're actually getting an embedded tax credit deal. Uh, and because of the presence of the housing production fund, we don't actually have to use some of those dear resources that we, that other transactions don't have any other option but tax credits and um, you know and soft funding and volume cap and things of that nature. So these are some of the examples. Um, the laureate is actually now open and leasing. Uh, this was the first housing production fund deal. Uh, Hillendale Gateway is uh, site work is starting next month, um, and this is a 463 unit deal. Um, one thing I would emphasize about the HPF is that it's one tool and 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 uh, as affordable housing practitioners know we're, we're constantly stacking and layering things on top of of each other whether it's financing or programs or anything else and so uh, we view this as uh, you know we view these housing communities as platforms for other things beyond just housing um, and, and in this case with Hillendale Gateway we're, we're doing the first two passive house uh, um, residential apartment communities in the state of Maryland. Um, and one of these will actually be the first net zero residential buildings, I think in like the mid Atlantic, uh, kind of outside of Boston, uh, New York, places like that. And so, um, so the housing production fund is first and foremost about production, but it is also a platform for some of these other, uh, some of these other initiatives that the commission finds important. Okay. Um, I don't know if we want to go through all of these, but yeah, uh, we can just, here's, here's a couple more examples. Yeah. More, more examples in, in our pipeline. Um, this is uh, a little bit of information about a state bill uh, that's in Maryland um, this session, which uh, would have, would create a housing innovation fund uh, would essentially be a matching fund uh, for uh, production uh, by public housing authorities across Maryland. Um, and, uh, you know, there's many ways to come up with the, the local match. Uh, it doesn't have to require local jurisdictions to create a, a housing production fund or uh, look exactly like we do. Uh, but this was a proposal that uh, we obviously uh, are very supportive of. Um, Zach, do you want to walk through this one? Yeah, so I think one of the sort of compelling uh, ideas about the production fund is that um, HOC or or any kind of public development entity, um, this this kind of gets to that scalability theme, uh, can be a significant part of the production, the annual production that the that, that you know we need in order to meet goals. So you can see that in sort of 15 through 2021 that um, that HOC was somewhere in the five to eight percent of the the annual um, you know, p permits being pulled, um, housing permits being pulled. And with the arrival of the HPF, that is expanding HOC's market share to uh, into the double digits uh, in some years, as high as 20% of annual production. Um, and then the, the final color you see there is an example of what matching, you know, that, that state bill, the matching funds can do. Uh, in terms of making a public development arm, um, you know, a, a significant viable portion of the annual production. And again, this is not designed to be uh, competitive with um, other channels. It's designed to be a third channel so that we can hit our housing goals. But, but some of the upshot of this is that all of the units that get produced in this way stay in governmental control. And so um, any of those kinds of resident protections which we'll get to, which really we can flip to the next slide. Um, all of these things come with pu public ownership, which is um, that, uh, as I mentioned, we follow the voluntary rent guidelines. So if there is, whether there is or is not a, uh, an appetite for, a, a, you know, a mandated um, rent stability measure, uh, this is this is a way in which to get a significant number of units into rent stability without even needing to mandate it. Um, terms of services, HOC is a, um, one of our strengths is in connecting our residents with uh, all the sorts of services, many of which you've heard today. We would, you know, we connect with the same kinds of great organizations in our, our neck of the woods, um, and this would become available to all of the communities in which we are owners. Um, there are these other sort of concurrent public goals of co-location of public facilities, environmental, um, and, um, and just generally uh, community and economic development 
Uh, and then lastly, the most the sort of uh, quiet, most important part of this whole thing is that, as you might imagine, as you pay the mortgage down on your house, you build equity over time. And so think about that idea with public ownership of these sorts of assets, where in 20, 30 years, that same sort of equity because of this fund and because of HSC's ownership of it stays inside the, you know, stays inside the government's uh, sphere. So that can that can that equity in turn can be used to, to both maintain these assets well and and also to exp to further expand um, the portfolio. Now this is just a won't go through all of these, but uh, some of HSC's uh, resident services. A lot of the we have you know supportive services like uh, you heard from a lot of the other uh, panelists today, um, and you know as Zach said. Um, you know these housing units. There's a uh, we're able to provide a, a direct pipeline from our wait list, from all the other doors that uh, people go in. Um, you know to have direct access to to these units uh, at a, at the affordability levels, and then we can layer in uh, vouchers and other tools to serve uh, you know even deeper affordability um, and different kinds of uh, residents. Um, and this slide summarizes uh, some of the economic impact of HOC's real estate activities at, uh, for Montgomery County. So we estimate um, about $3 billion, um, and this is um, from 2009 through uh, uh, 2021. Uh, so it does not include the impact of the HPF and the, the development that we've, we've been able to fund there. Um, so. We can stop there and uh, happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you so much. Very interesting sort of tact you're taking that's different than a lot of places. So are there questions from the committee about Representative oh, Chair Gear, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thanks to you both for being here. This is a really interesting presentation. I think, you know, as, as we all do, we kind of, in my head, I'm going, okay, what do we, what pieces of this do we have in Maine and how might this kind of fit together um, or how might this accommodate or be able to use the model that you're talking about here today? So a couple of questions have emerged for me uh, as a result. Clearly, your county is, you know, one third the size of Maine. So, so we're talking, you know, kind of a, a difference of scale that's pretty significant. Um, and my aunt and uncle lived in Gaithersburg, so I'm very familiar with your with the with the uh, you know level of population and activity that's there. Um, so I will say that you know when you think about this kind of a model for uh, a population of a much smaller scale, including a lot of rural areas, uh, what challenges and or opportunities would you foresee? And then also, you know, uh, around the owner, the public ownership question, uh, what experience did you all have as, as uh, the county being the owners of the, um, of the projects of the, of the buildings? And um, how did that relate to then the, creating this strategy moving forward? 